Well, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. It is so good to see you. It is so good to see all of you. Thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Jackson Lindsay. I'm the pastor of the youth here at the fellowship. Pastor Don is on his way back to the United States to join us very soon, hopefully tomorrow at some point. So we will be seeing him shortly. And we're just so thankful that you are joining in with us tonight. I just want to encourage you that wherever you are, whether you're here in the States or you're around the world, to stand up where you are. Join us in praise and worship. I'd like to also invite all of you here tonight to please join with us and stand for some praise and worship. We are going to have a wonderful service tonight. The Lord has prepared many things for us. I just want you to ask to open up your heart to receive this evening. We love you. We love each and every single one of you. And let's go ahead and have a wonderful service. James is leading us tonight. Brother James, take us away. Come on, everybody. It's time to give him some praise tonight. It's time to lift our voice. time to lift our hands. time to move our feet. Are you ready? How many of y'all know that his love never fails? tonight. Here we go. Come on. For you made all things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. I want to hear you sing, church. You make. I know, I, I know you can get louder. Come on. For you make. Yeah, here we go. Sing it again. You make all things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. 
hearts we want to give him adoration we want to give him praise we want to give him glory not us we want to give him everything tonight come on here we go this is where worship starts here in the temple of my heart Remembering who you are, what you've done. That's right, there you go. But this is your majesty, all I have tasted and I've seen. Remembering who you are once again. Come on. Exalted and lifted high And all of the kingdom in Christ you are You are the Lord Oh, you are the Lord Here we go, this is eternity, everybody sing, come on This is eternity Crawling deep inside of me I'm right where I'm meant to be Here with you And this is your family Stretching as far as I can see I'm right where I'm meant to be Once again
Let's just give it all to Jesus. All to Jesus now. It belongs to Him. All to Jesus now. Holding nothing back, no. Holding nothing.
Yeah. 
We thank you, Lord. Worthy is your name. You are worthy to be praised. There is none like you. There is none beside you. We worship you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. The life that we have, the hope that we have, it's all because of you. You are what we desire. You are who we long for. The greatest of all. The name which is above all names. The light, the word, you, Jesus, are what we pursue. You are the reason we have our being, the reason we live, the reason we sing is because of you. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done. Thank you. Thank you for your sacrifice and for your love. We lift up those to you today that are sick, that are hurting. We ask, Lord, that you would heal. We ask that you would deliver. We ask that you would protect and comfort. We pray for Martin. We ask, Lord, that you would help in his life, that you would remove all of these personality traits. You would remove them from him. Cause him to be more like you, Jesus. Cause him to shine like you, to love like you, to be kind like you and to see himself the way that you see him. We pray for Seth, Lord, that you would give him direction in his life. I know, Lord, that you talk to us all. You're always speaking, but I ask that you would open up his ears to hear your words, that he would know which way to go and what to do. We pray for Victor that has COVID. Father, we ask that you would heal Victor in Jesus' name. Heal his body completely. Touch him. Touch his lungs. Correct everything that's wrong. Pray for Joshua as well. Thanking you, Father, for what you've done in him, getting him through the worst part of it. But I ask that you would heal Joshua of COVID as well. We lift up Victor with a K in the Ukraine. He's not been heard from. Was in one of the cities that was heavily bombed. Father, you know where he is. Lord, I ask that you would protect him, that you would pull him out of that situation. And while I'm praying for Victor, I also pray for all of those in the Ukraine. Lord, I ask that you would protect those that were evacuated from the, uh, the, um, that building, the, the mill, whatever it was. Lord, I ask that you would just be there with them, that you would protect them, that you would be their guide, that you would be their shield, that you would fight for them on their behalf. I ask, Lord, that you would also remove the invasion completely, that you would stop the invasion totally. There would be peace in their land. We pray for Stephanie and for Melinda. We ask for deliverance for them, Father. We ask that you would remove the hold that this substance has on them, Father. That you would cause them to be clean. That you would cause them to be pure. That you would open up their eyes to see that you are all that they need. They don't need anything to make themselves feel better. They don't need anything to bring value to them. They just need you. Open their eyes to see that. We also pray for Andrea dealing with allergies and sinus issues. Father, we ask that you would completely open up her sinus ways, that everything would be fine, that she'd be able to breathe fully and easily. There would be no pain and no issues. We thank you, Lord, for her and for all that she does, that she continues to serve you, continues to do that what you ask her to do. Thank you for that. We ask that you heal her. Father, we also pray for Zach. Lord, we ask that you would touch him as well, that you would heal his body, remove whatever it is that's afflicting him, that's, that is causing him to not feel well. We ask that you would bring him into wholeness. In Jesus' name, your name, which is above all names. And while I'm praying for those that are sick, I ask, Lord, that you would touch every single person in the house tonight and those that are worshiping online, that you would touch them if they have any sicknesses anywhere in their body, from broken feet to recovering from surgery. We also want to give you a praise report. Lord, say thank you so much for being with Margaret as she is now home from recuperating after a surgery. Any of those that are going to be going through a surgery, Lord, we ask that you be with them, that you strengthen them, that you guide the hands of the doctors and the surgeons. We just thank you for the medical field. We thank you for all that you've given us. We don't take that for granted. 
Thank you for our doctors and our physicians. Lord, thank you that you are the great physician. And so, Lord, I ask that you heal all of those that have cancer and all other kinds of diseases that we don't have tools to heal. But your word says that by your stripes, we have been made healed or whole. We've been healed by your stripes, Jesus. I thank you for that. Thank you for taking our sicknesses and our infirmities on yourself and bearing that. So, Father, again, I ask that you would heal, that you would do a major thing in those that we continually make petitions for. And, Lord, I want to especially call out Jasmine, and I ask, Father, that you would heal her, cause her to walk again, bring her off of all of the things that she's been dealing with, out of the things that she's been dealing with. Lord, you know what's going on. I ask that you intervene on her behalf right now in Jesus' name. You would fight for her and fight for everybody that is going through something. We love you, Father. We're thankful for you and all that you've done. Thank you for sending your Holy Spirit, our helper, our guidance. Thank you, Jesus, for being our life, being all that we need. We worship you this evening. And we ask all of these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, it is a great night. Thank you all so very, very much for being here. If you uh, came in after the, the, the welcoming time, the greeting time that we had, my name is Jackson Lindsay. I'm the pastor of the youth here at the fellowship. Pastor Don is on his way back to the United States. He is in the air and he is, as, as I said, amen, yes, yeah. And as I said earlier, he is closer to God than we all are. So, you know, it's a, yeah, a little joke. Anyway, we're going to release our kids now to Children's Church. So children, you can go have a wonderful time in Children's Church. And youth, we're going to be staying in here tonight, all right? So we can get some, some good music. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Charity, I know you saw me jamming, so you turned it up a little bit. I appreciate that. Yeah, you're the best. All right, well, we're going to, uh, we want to just take a second to greet all of our first-time guests. If you are here with us for the very first time, if you wouldn't mind just waving at me. Is there anybody here that this is your very first time with us? If you can just wave at me so I can, we can, can acknowledge you. We just want to welcome you and give you a gift as well. I see people waving at each other, so you're kind of throwing me off a little bit. That's okay. No, that's all right. I just want to make sure. Okay, so let's take a second to greet each other. Now you can wave at each other. If you would, please stand up. You can move around a little bit and go give somebody a hug if they're close by. Give a handshake. Tell somebody hello. As we say, there is a lot of love in this house, and it is 
It is always hard to end the greeting time as we're walking around. It's like, hurry up, sit down, stop talking to each other, stop loving on each other, stop being a Christian. Anyway. All right, well, we have some announcements for you. We've got some things that are going on here at the fellowship. We want to make you aware of those. So if you would, please turn your attention to the screens and see all the things that are going on here at the fellowship. family. What an amazing day here at the Fellowship. I'm Jennifer, and here are some of our upcoming events. Here at the Fellowship, we believe in helping and offering as much as we can to you and the community. One of the ways in which we do this is by providing monthly vaccination clinics against the COVID-19 virus. Now, if you would like to receive your vaccination or your booster, come by the church Saturday, May the 21st, from 8 to 11 a.m. in the MWC classroom. Please share this information with your friends and family. Calling all ladies for Landscape Day. That's right. Our next Landscape Day is a ladies' day, and you can bring the kiddos. Sign up, grab your gloves, and join us for Landscape Day, Saturday, May the 21st, from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Come join us as we keep our campus looking beautiful together. Don't forget, Saturday, May the 21st, and we start at 8 a.m. Now, we didn't forget about you, you mighty men of the fellowship. Also on Saturday, May the 21st, it will be your time for some brotherly fellowship at your monthly men's meeting, beginning at 8.30 a.m. with an early breakfast, followed by a powerful word at 9 a.m. Come and be fortified, and don't forget to invite someone, Saturday, May the 21st. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, he said, let there be light. Registration for Family VBS 2022 is in full swing. Register your family today in the main foyer. Bring a blanket or some chairs, but most definitely bring your family as we journey in Christ, June the 8th through the 10th. Thank you for your attention. And now we will return to our worship service. May the Lord bless you and keep you. All right. Thank you so much for all, of, for all of you paying attention to that. hope you took notes of all of the different dates and times. And before we move forward, just wanted to uh, make a special highlight of somebody that I see that is here with us. Uh, Pastor Mario Benitez is here. It's good to see you. Hello. He is the pastor of Alice Christian Fellowship. He is also a cowboy fan, and we're working on that. So. He said he's a hopeless case. All right. All right. But it is good to have you with us. Thank you so much for being here. We love you very, very much. All right. It is now time for us to give. We're going to move into our offering time. Amen. And we have three ways to give here at the fellowship. You can give here in person. Uh, you can raise your hand if you need an offering envelope, and our ushers will be quick to give you one. If you're giving by cash and you would like record of your giving, this is the way to do that. If you're giving by check, you don't necessarily need an envelope because all of your information is already on your check. Uh, you can also give online if you go to cccfellowship.com forward slash give and click the giving options. You can also text your gift if you text to the number 361-386-2565, the word keywords. It will give you all of the different places that you can allocate your gift. All right? Well, let me go ahead and pray for you, and then you'll be in the hands of the ushers. And we'll be coming back with some prayer time, and then also a word after that. So when I come back up, I'll explain what we'll be doing shortly. Okay? Father, we thank you so much for all that you've done. Thank you for pouring out on us lavishly. Thank you for not sparing anything, not even your own son, when you redeemed us. Thank you, Father. We give you our lives back to you out of worship. We give you our finances to you out of worship. We don't do it out of requirement or we're afraid that if we don't give, you're not going to love us. We give because of what you've done. We give because we love you and we worship you with all that we have. Our time, our money, our thoughts, our emotions, everything is yours. Father, we ask that you would bless this gift tonight, that he would go out and do what you would want done here on this earth, that it would accomplish your will. And I ask that you would bless the giver as well. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. There's a place where mercy reigns and never dies. There's a place 
where streams of grace flow deep and wide. Where all the love I've ever found comes like a flood. James, that was excellent. And Amy, thank you so much. And also thank you to our camera operators and to our ushers and those in the sound booth, those upstairs. Thank you everybody for being here. We're going to have some time of prayer now. We're going to transition into some prayer time. We've been doing this uh, for a good while, but uh, one of the things that is important is that we do pray. The Bible says to always pray. And so it's something that, that we need to do as believers. The Lord gives it to us. It's our part. One of the things that uh, Brother Stan talks about is that we can't do God's part and He won't do ours. And so it is our job to pray and to call out. He tells us to knock if we want the door to be opened. He tells us to seek if we want to find. And so that's what this time is. It's a time for us to come before Him, come before the throne room of God which is a very humbling thing, and ask and petition him, the creator of the universe. And so Nathan is going to be setting up a microphone up front here. And so we're asking that if you would like to pray, that you would stick to about two minutes. We're wanting to go about two minutes a person. 
We'll have a uh, timer, I think, up on the, the back screens for you to, to get an idea so you can see. So don't, don't close your eyes and pray for seven minutes, okay? Make sure that you are able to see the timer. And um, if you see me stand up, that most likely means that you are, have gone well over your time. Um, but if I stand up and my arms are up, that means that you've, you've ejected me from my seat and <laughs> I just can't contain it anymore, okay? Um, and I also wanted to just say a quick, a quick note. Uh, we don't have youth tonight, so youth, you're in here, and you are also open to come up and pray. Don't feel like this is just something for the adults. You have the Holy Spirit in you. Not a, not a junior Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit, okay? So don't, don't be afraid. Don't be embarrassed. If you feel like he's inside and saying, I want you to go pray, get up there, all right? We're not going to laugh at you. We're not going to make fun of you, all right? We've all been there. We've all grown up from that time period. And uh, as, as Claire and I like to say, uh, awkward before awesome. So don't feel bad if it's a little shaky at first. The Lord's in you and he wants to speak, okay? So I'm going to open it up. And like I said, two minutes, the clock is on the back. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father God. We thank you for your presence here tonight, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Father, for all in attendance here. I thank you that you're inclining your ear to hear us, Father. The words of the saints. We bring these needs before you, Father. You want us to ask. You want us to cry out, Father. You want to be needed, Lord. And we do. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord Jesus, more than ever, Father God. So I thank you, Father. I thank you for all those families represented tonight here in the house, Lord, and who are watching online, and those who couldn't be here tonight but wanted to. I thank you, Father, to pour out on the families of the fellowship, Father, to pour out on everyone connected to us, Lord. I thank you that you are our shield. You are our bulwark. That you have poured out your favor on us, Father, in the midst of everything, Lord. I thank you that we have your throne to run to, Father. We have a hope. We have a future in you, Lord Jesus. And we lift up those, those needs tonight, Father the things that are on our hearts and our minds right now, we speak them aloud and say, have your will, Lord Jesus. Have your way in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you. You're so wonderful. Thank you for loving us so much and making us your children. Thank you for making us your sons and your daughters. For loving us so much that you hear us, that we can cry out to you, that we can come to you, and you hear us and you love us so greatly. Father God, I ask you that you would exchange our thoughts for your thoughts, our ways for your ways that our desire would be to surrender all of ourselves to you in every way and that you would fill us more and more with your presence, with your goodness, with your fire. Lord, I ask you that you would increase the hunger and the thirst for righteousness in this people, that we would be surrendered wholly to you, a people made holy as you are holy, for you are glorious and mighty and worthy of it. Lord, you sent your son to die in our place and you've given us the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead and that it has given a life to our mortal bodies. Thank you, Lord, for sending us your spirit. Lord, I ask you to fill us and overflow us. Lord, I ask you that every single person here will desire you more and more and they will surrender more and more and be filled with more and more of you and yielded more and more to you, obedient willingly obedient to your will and to your glory. In Jesus' name, make us a people after your own heart. 
And Lord, I ask you that you would teach your people who they are, who you've made them, and the the authority that you've given this people. In Jesus' name, Lord, I praise you. I thank you. I thank you for each and every one of them. They are precious in your sight. Lord, I ask you that you would pour out your healing upon them in every way, healing their hearts, their minds, their bodies. Glorify yourself, Lord. Let them taste and see how good you are. In Jesus' name, amen. just want to thank you for who you are you are righteous you are pure you are holy Lord Jesus you're everything to us you're all we need you're the one thing that we need and you're everything that we need how awesome is that you are amazing God you're our father and you said that we are your friend we're grabbing hold of that Lord and we're not letting it go thank you thank you Thank you. Your word said that your father is always working and you are always working. And so we know, we know for sure that you've healed somebody here tonight. We know that you have provided for someone tonight. We know that you've been a banner for someone tonight. We know that you have surrounded someone tonight. We know you've embraced someone and filled them with your love. And so we thank you for all that you've done. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for every family represented here. We know that you're a God who is not just a God of an individual, but God of families. Lord Jesus, you've showed us, Lord Jesus, in your word. Cornelius is one of them. Lord Jesus, you brought salvation not just to him but to the entire family and so i pray a special blessing over every family represented here today those who are listening and those who are in the house i pray a special blessing over them i pray that um, they're they know that their prayers are answered lord jesus because you're hearing your ears inclined lord to us and so we bless you we praise you we honor you tonight and we surrender ourselves to your will and to your way amen i just want to thank you heavenly father and give you all the honor and the glory and the praise because you deserve all the glory. It's not I that do the good works. It's you that do the good works in us. And Father God, I just thank you for the love that we're walking in through you. The love, your great love that you had died for us. And Father God, I just ask to bless each and every one here and everyone that those around the world, Father God, they need to call upon the name of Jesus and shall be saved and their whole household, Father God. And by your stripes, they are healed, Father God, because I believe that, that you are our healer. You are our mighty God. You are everything to us, Father God. So bless each and one of them, and Father God, let them hear what your words is saying to them, and let your word change them from now and forever. Ever. Do not just sit here and just, just receive it. Just believe it and speak it. Don't speak anything but the word of God because it will change you and your household and you shall be healed. Because he died on that cross for us. And I thank you, Father God, for everything that you're doing for us right now in the name of Jesus. That no weapon forms shall prosper. That on you and God and I mighty, and you are mighty. And I thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you're doing great and mighty things right now. And I thank you that you bring in Pastor Don and Marva, Sister Marva, home safely, that they got a good report. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Can we have a hallelujah? I say thank you, Jesus. Father God, we praise you, we glorify you, Lord. 
we exalt you father we thank you for your love <laughs> your words declare that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us not only that Lord but you have chosen us sinful men people that have been alienated from you your enemies you have chosen us to be the body a body for your Holy Spirit in the earth father we thank you there is nothing that we have done nothing that we could have done to deserve this but your grace and your mercies father we thank you thank you God that you have made us into a people in whom you can live and you can move and express your glory express your your power express your love Lord we thank you father we thank you father God I just lift up father God each and every one that is present here tonight all the families that are represented for those who are are watching those who are listening online Lord we just thank you in the name of Jesus that you will meet them at their point of their need those who need healing Lord just heal them those who need salvation God draw them to Jesus Jesus said unless you draw them Lord they will not come draw them father God whatever mess they are in draw them because you have died for them you have paid the price father we thank you thank you for this opportunity just to say thanks to you we praise you Lord in Jesus name amen father we bless you and we give you glory and honor I've been in the church morning 18 years father you said Jesus died on the cross and we pray for everybody family friends whoever and we give you glory and honor and praise and Jesus you you said you, we're gonna no weapon form against us and we and we're not gonna give up and we're gonna stay strong in your name I pray amen Heavenly Father, we just come into your presence, dear Lord, to say thank you, dear Lord, for who you are, Lord, for what you have done, dear Father. We thank you, dear Lord, that you are our Lord. You are our God. You are our Savior, Father. You are the Holy One of Israel, dear Lord. You are the Lord, and there's nothing too hard for you. So, Father, we thank you, dear Lord, and as we live in these turbulent times, dear Lord, and times of pestilence and times, dear Lord, of wars, dear Father, and nations realigning, Lord. Father, help us, dear Lord, to keep our focus on you, Lord. Help us, dear Lord, to lift up Jesus, dear Father, for all to see, dear Lord. Father, help us, dear Lord, that we might glorify you, dear Father. But Father, we, we the, the, your word says, dear Lord, as uh, blessed is the ones, dear Lord, who hungers and thirsts after righteousness, for they shall be filled. So, Father, we pray, dear Lord, that you, O oh God, would be lifted up. Dear Lord, that you, O oh God, would just be lifted up in your church, dear Father. Each and every one of us, dear Lord, will show, dear Father, the glory of God. To know, dear Father, that we now tabernacle with the living God, dear Father. And we're able to call on you, dear Lord. And Father, we thank you, dear Lord, that you hear us, dear Lord. And we thank you for answering our prayers. We pray for all those, dear Lord, who are sick. Father, all those, dear Lord, who the enemy, dear Lord, has come against, Father. We pray that you would raise them up, that you would cause them to stand up on their feet, dear Lord, and give glory and praise and honor to you, dear Lord. And help us all, dear Lord, to open up our mouths, Father. Father, when we see sin, dear Lord, to speak, dear Lord, the righteousness of God. Father, we thank you, dear Lord, because you have made us the righteousness of God in Christ. So we bless you, Lord. We bless you this evening, Father. And we pray, dear Lord, that you, oh God, would use us, dear Lord, in this time. In this day, Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise. Amen. Father, tonight um, we come to you as one assembly, one people that speak one language, and that's the language of Jesus. Father, I thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for knowing us so intimately and so descriptively. Thank you, Father, that your word says the righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers us from all our trouble. Father, I thank you because we know you. 
I thank you, Father, because there is a mandate in this house for a gospel, for a message that is Christ-centered, a message that is simple, and a message that is clear. Father, I thank you because you are the message. You are the messenger, and you speak to us individually. Father, you told me, talk about my love. So, Father, when we talk about you, we talk about your love. We talk about what you did on the cross for us and how you died for us and how you saved us and how you've washed us and you've cleansed us and how you called us by name and we are your sons and we're going to live in heaven with you. You're coming back for a bride without spot and wrinkle and that's us. Father, I thank you because we are the church that Jesus died that Jesus Christ died for. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we have a pastor here who loves you, who has dedicated his life to serving you with simplicity and with clarity. So, Father, we thank you for Pastor Don and Miss Marva and the First Family. Thank you for them. Father, you brought us into the fold and you've kept us year after year, decade after decade, you have kept us for this day. So Father, the scripture says, arise, shine, for the light has come, for the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. So Father, this is our, our hour, and we will declare you in simplicity and in clarity. In Jesus' name. I just want to offer this time to uh, ask you, Lord, and thank you in advance that you send particular comfort to the people of my, where I grew up. Yeah. And Lord, I just ask you, this is a sweet, dear church that was attacked, Father. And there's churches in many places, but you said these things would happen. And so, Father, I thank you. I thank you to comfort those people. Comfort the people of Buffalo, New York, Father. They're all heartbroken, Lord. They're all heartbroken. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Show them your ways. Show them who you are, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know you see the righteous and the unrighteous. You allow things, Father, for your purposes. And I thank you that these people would see you, see you in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we saw your mighty work when you stopped Saul on the road to Damascus and you changed his heart, you stopped him from the persecutions and sent him out to do your work. We saw that happen again when Jonah went to the town, went to Nineveh and turned the king's heart and caused his people to begin to worship you. We saw it again with Nebuchadnezzar in the same type of situation. Maybe we see the same thing happening in Ukraine right now as Putin has backed down from his threats against Finland and Sweden. We ask you to finish that work, Heavenly Father. Do it in such a way that the world knows that it wasn't Putin. It was your hand that changed him and that caused the war to stop and all the Russians withdrew from Ukraine so that they can begin the rebuilding phase. We thank you, Jesus, for what you are doing. Amen. Father, we thank you for the privilege that we can come and approach you and open our hearts to, uh, to bring our needs before you, our concerns, and that you listen, that you're always attentive. How great a privilege that we have. And sometimes I feel like I just uh, treat it casually, Lord, but I don't want to treat you casually in any way. So, Father, I thank you for, for being attentive and for responding, for, for listening to us and for acting on our behalf and always being faithful and good and just and so uh 
while the world shakes around us and so many things in the world crumble and um, things become evident that uh, they're not of you and that, that the world is in need, well, Lord, we ask you to, to have mercy on us. We ask you to, uh, to break in, break in in the Ukraine, break in, in in Sri Lanka, break in in Myanmar, and so many places where the world system is crumbling and people are in need of, of mercy, Lord. I ask you to have mercy. Father, I thank you for, um, for your work in our hearts, and yet your word says that the judgment begins in the church. And so uh, we ask you, Lord, to, to come and do what you must. Uh, you call us to prepare ourselves. You call us to be ready. And yet in so many ways, I feel like maybe we, we're asleep and we don't notice. So I ask you, Lord, to, uh, to awaken us. I ask you for an experience as, uh, as the men on the road to Emmaus had with Jesus where you would come and speak in our hearts with clarity and illuminate your word within us, that you would cause us to awake and to see what you had written there all along, but maybe concealed for this hour, to open it up, Lord, that we would not be negligent of this time, but that we would be ready, that we would prepare ourselves and be found wise in that hour. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, I want to pray for our nation, and I want to pray for our babies, Lord. Father, it broke my heart to see the news today, to see babies having to be treated in the ERs because they didn't have formula. Father, I pray for them. I pray for our nation, and I pray for the supply chain in our nation. Father, I come against the plans of the enemy to destroy this next generation. All the things that have come against them, COVID and war and now formula, Jesus, we cry out to you. Father, I pray that you would make a way that there would be enough, not just in the United States, but all over the world for all babies and all children everywhere. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would intervene in these situations, Lord God, and that you would deliver our children out of the hand of all the evil schemes and plots of the enemy. Father, tonight you were showing me how praise and worship routes the enemy. Praise and worship pushes back all the plans and schemes of the enemy, but so does our obedience. So, Father, I pray that you would give us obedient hearts to live the lives that you've called us to live in righteousness and holiness that we would be a people truly set apart for you and that our lives would be exemplary in every way father thank you for intervening in this situation and meeting the needs of these babies in jesus name i pray Lord God, I thank you for everything you've done for me and my family, for taking care of me when I didn't even know it, for watching over for me and my family and just being the best person for me, for when I was scared, for when I was hurting, for when I was mad. You've always been there for me, and I thank you for that. I ask that you be there for everyone here. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Father, I would just like to also pray for our nation. Lord, I ask that 
you would capture the heart of every man, woman, and child. But all of the problems that we run into are because of sin on the earth. So Lord, I ask that you would move in a mighty way. That all would come to the knowledge of you, Jesus, and thus be changed, become new creations. The old being passed away, and behold, all things being new in their lives. And that they would reflect in who they are, what they say, and what they do. I thank you for this time of prayer. I thank you for hearing us. I thank you for sending your presence this evening and being here with us. You are so good. You are so awesome. We worship you, and I thank you for hearing us. I come into agreement with all of our my brothers and sisters that prayed tonight, and we also lift up Mr. Morgan. Lord, we ask that you would heal him completely from the sciatica pain and all of that. Lord, that you would touch his body right now in Jesus' name. There would be no more pain in him whatsoever. We know you can do it. I ask that you do it for him right now. And for all of those struggling with any type of back pain or nerve pain, we ask that you heal them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for all of those that uh, came up and prayed. And uh, we really appreciate uh, the Lord in you and what he's done in you. And uh, it's just an amazing life to live with the Lord. I don't know how people do it without him. Uh, the, the lack of hope, you know, when you look around and you see the things that are happening in the world today, I mean, how, how do you wake up? How do you go to work? How do you do the normal things that you're supposed to do with all of the things that are taking place and happening? I just don't know how one does it. Um, I know as things come before me, I can always say, Lord, we need you. Please give me peace. Protect my mind. Just allow me to focus. Remove these thoughts from my head. And he does. And so I just always wonder, what, what do people do that don't have Jesus? And it's a very scary thought, and that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. Uh, on, on Monday night, I had a message prepared and ready to go and, uh, for, for this evening. And the Lord said, hey, uh, let's go talk for a bit. I said, okay. So we were talking, and he said, I want to change the message. I said, well, you got it. You're the, you're the one in charge, whatever you want. What do you want me to talk about? He said, I want you to talk about the peace of God. I said, okay. I said, what is, in what regard, what are you talking about? And he said, as it applies to your family, soul, heart, and thus your attitude. Okay. I said, you got it. Let's talk about it. So as I was thinking about this and as I was praying about it, he just kind of downloaded everything to me. And those are the easiest messages for those of you that do speak. Those are the easiest ones when you're just sitting there and you can just basically repeat everything that he's saying. And so I was like, oh, I know what's happening got my phone and hit record, and then just started talking. And so I have the whole message, and I was able to transcribe it. I'm not going to read it, but it's all there. And I was so excited about that. I was like, Lord, you did all the work. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. I didn't have to go do any kind of research or anything. Um, but the first part was applying to our family, the peace of God when it comes to our families. Um, that's a very, very touchy place for a lot of us. I know we have a, a lot of us have an idea that, that things can happen to other people, but don't come near my family. And the Lord allows things to come against our families just to reveal in us who do we really put our trust in and what is really valuable to us. Um, I know he's done that to me. There have been times where I said, you know what, I can go through anything as long as you don't touch my girls. If something happens to my girls, I don't know what I'm going to do. And he's bringing me to a place that I would even say, Lord, even if something happens there, I still trust you. I still will follow you. And a lot of times when we think about things that, that cause um, conflict in our family, a lot of them are financial, right? And I was thinking about this and I said, okay, finances, what does that have to do with anything? And everything, right? <laughs> We're always thinking about money. And um, one of the things I thought was interesting was when, when Jesus was a toddler, the wise men brought his family gifts fit for a king, right? And I wondered about that as Joseph being a carpenter and Mary not having a job. Did they have a whole lot of money? I don't know. I don't think so. I wouldn't imagine so. And then all of a sudden, the Lord provides for Jesus' family. And then I was thinking about the widow in the Old Testament that had a lack and Elisha uh, came and told her to pour all of her oil into the jars 
of her neighbors. And the oil kept going and going and going and going. And she had enough to take care of the debt. And her kids weren't being going to be sold into slavery. I thought about the woman in the New Testament that gave her two mites to the temple. All that she had, every bit of it, her life savings, all of it being given, saying, Lord, I give you all that I have. I'm putting my whole trust in you. Thinking about Jesus feeding the 5,000. Thinking about Jesus sending out the disciples to go minister, to go preach. And he told them not to take anything with you. Don't take money. Don't take food. Don't take a staff. Just take your jacket. And then other translations, go ahead and take your jacket. So they weren't really sure if they could take a jacket or not. But they went, and they didn't have anything. And on their way back, he asked them, did you lack for anything? And they said, no, we didn't lack anything. We had all that we needed. And so I think about these things. We worry so much about this stuff. And yet we have example after example after example in the Bible of the Lord saying, I got you. Don't worry about it. Don't stress about it. I've got you. Another thing that causes strife in our families that might rob us of our peace are relationships within our families. Kids not acting right. Brothers and sisters acting weird. Parents not acting correctly. But Jesus gives us a wonderful uh, parable of the prodigal son returning home. So for those wayward children, he gives us hope and says, I've got your child in my hand. The one sheep might nibble his way away, but I'm going to go after him. I'm going to bring him back. Time after time again, there are examples of healing children and other loved ones, bringing unity in, in families again. I don't know if you've ever had a child who was on the verge of sickness of death, but I know that that's got to be just something that would wreck a parent would wreck a mother and a father. And Jesus healing these children in the Bible and then healing others today as we pray gives us hope. And I thought about the love that the Lord has for us and the wisdom that he gives us to unite families, to keep families together. This is kind of a weird thing to think about, but Solomon, King Solomon, when they brought the child to King Solomon and said, whose mother is this? God gave him wisdom to keep a family together. And so I think about peace in that moment when someone comes to you and you have an impossible decision to make, God will give you the right things to say. So that was the family portion of the peace of God. And then the soul, which is your mind, your will, and emotions. We have a lot of scriptures about your mind. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, it says, For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ? So our mind is found in Jesus Christ. In Psalms, it says, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. In 2 Timothy, it says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of peace, love, and a sound mind. In Colossians chapter 3, it says, set your minds on things above, not things on the earth. We are able to have peace of mind because of Jesus. He modeled it. He's given us the Holy Spirit to live it the exact same way that he did. If we keep our eyes on Jesus, we won't be distracted and lured away by other things. Earlier when I mentioned the the children going astray, most kids don't just get up and run off. Most nibble their way away. They take little steps, little bites, us as well. And so if we keep our eyes on Christ, we won't be distracted We won't be like Peter when we look at the winds and the waves and the craziness of the world and go, who can we trust? But instead, turning to Jesus. Our will. We find that if we start to pray that the Lord's will be done, we will start to desire the things that God wants and not what we want. In Psalms 37, it says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. When you start to seek the Lord, the desires of your heart become his desires. And he is so glad and happy to give us our desires when we seek him. So as we start to desire eternal things, things that do not pass away, things that cannot be taken away, things that cannot be destroyed, we have peace. Because those things cannot be taken. They cannot be defeated. And when we have the things that we want sometimes are temporary, and Scripture says that they are passing away. He even says that heaven and earth will pass away, but His words by no means will pass away. And that is what we should be striving for and pursuing are those things that will not pass away. Your emotions. 
you'll find that as you pursue the Lord, that you'll start to be moved by the things that move him. You won't get upset over trivial things, over things of this world. You will still take care of things and you will still have to be mindful of them to do your, your due duty, your due diligence. But when the peace of God reigns in your life through spending time with him, through prayer, the Holy Spirit shows up and you realize how small these other things are. And lastly, your heart, your heart, the peace of God in regards to your heart. The interesting thing is that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Jeremiah says in chapter 17, verse 9. We see it in our culture. We see it when people don't value life. We see it when they are selfish. We see it when they're greedy. We see it when they're building idols digitally, politically, looking to fit the Jesus-shaped hole in their hearts with things of this world. The Israelites did it again over and over and over and over and over and over. We do it, usually not in the same way. We don't build golden calves. But for many young people, it's a digital idol. It's whatever we seek and long for to find our value. But Jesus totally eradicates that. In Ezekiel, it says, I will give you a new heart. I will put a new spirit in you. I will remove from your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. We are no longer turned off to God, but instead we are alive and our hearts beat for him. We are able to understand and hear his voice and now are finally able to please him. And I don't know about you, but that's the best feeling that I've ever had is when I do what the Lord wants me to do and how he wanted me to do it. And so all of that being said, when the peace of God comes for your family, for your soul, and for your heart, your attitude is adjusted. Your attitude is changed. When you realize that God is taking care of you more than you can think or imagine, what does that do for you? How does that cause you to respond to things? How does your attitude reflect that? For me, it comes in the form of a term that I've coined, Godfidence. It's not an irrational confidence or a peace that's just plain dumb, but it's a trust that I am where he wants me and I'm doing what he wants me to do and also how he wants me to do it. Nothing and no one can derail me when I'm in that state. And it doesn't matter what's going, in, going on in my life. I can rest in him. I'm going to tell a quick story. Uh, We go to Discovery Camp usually every summer. We haven't gone for the last two years because of uh, the the pandemic. And we weren't able to make it again this year because by the time that they opened everything up, it was already full within a couple of days after opening, and I didn't get in in time. But when we travel, it's about three, four hours away from here, and we travel by a charter bus. And so we have a driver, which is really nice because when I worked uh, at, at Ray High School with CCISD and I was a tennis coach, we would go to these tournaments, and they didn't have enough bus drivers. So they forced all the coaches to get their CDLs so that way we could drive. And so if you've ever driven a bus with about 25 teenagers in it, standing up and down, throwing stuff at each other, and you're trying to drive and also keep everybody corrected and the guys sitting in their seats and the girls sitting in their seats. It's very difficult. So praise the Lord for assistant tennis coaches. They got to do all of that. And so we get on these buses and we're driving to camp, and I would always tell the bus drivers very, very selfishly and very, very pridefully, hey, if something happens to you, I've got my CDL. I can drive this. Don't you worry. And they would always give me the same reaction. Oh, thanks. Because, you know, that's not a great thing to say to somebody. If something happens to you, I got it. Like, that's weird. And so finally the Lord convicted me of that, and I stopped saying it. And so this one particular year, uh, we had this bus driver. His name was Michael, and he has long, flowing hair, uh, golden blonde hair, and he's a California surfer dude. Talked just like it, acted like it. Everything was great. Yeah, dude, it's all good. And I'm watching him drive out of our parking lot, which is not made for charter buses. And he gets out of the parking lot, and I tell him, hey, man, just want to let you know, you did an excellent job getting out of this parking lot. Like, it was good. Oh, thanks. I'm like, no, he doesn't understand. He doesn't get it. That was a great compliment coming from me because I know I've got my CDL. So I say, say, hey, man, hey, no, I want to let you know I've got my CDL. I know, I know a thing or two, all right, because I've seen a thing or two. So I'll just let you know that was a great job. And he said, oh, yeah, appreciate it. 
I'm still a little bothered. Like, you don't get it. Like, you should be honored that I'm complimenting you. So I said, hey, Michael, what's the best compliment you've ever received as a bus driver? And he didn't take long. He kind of thought for just a second, and he said, if, uh, if you fall asleep. Huh? He said, if you, as the leader, will fall asleep, that's the best compliment you can give me. Because that means you're putting your life and the life of all of those kids in my hands. I said, wow. So then I pretended like, like I'm asleep. <laughs> but I said, oh, man, that's amazing. I'd never considered that. He said, you can tell me all day and all night. You can flap your lips. But until your actions back up your words, doesn't mean anything. But if you actually fall asleep, then I know that you truly and fully trust me. I said, wow. And so as I come to a close, that made me think about another time someone fell asleep. About Jesus when he was sleeping on the boat. Now, he didn't fall asleep in the storm. He fell asleep before it. But he trusted the Lord so much that not even the storm could move him. So when I'm talking about the peace of God, as it comes into the different areas of your life and it eventually affects your attitude, that's what I'm talking about. How do you respond to things? Do you react or do you respond? Are you moved easily? Or can the entire world be upside down and you're still okay? I want to read uh, a scripture real quick, and it kind of talks about this. Um, in Psalms 107, starting in verse 23, uh, we were having our staff prayer this morning, and I'll be closing with this verse here. We were having our uh, staff meeting this morning, and uh, Jennifer Avalos was, was leading it. And she had no idea that Pastor Jackson was looking for a, a major scripture to hang his hat on for his message. And it's Wednesday. Today's Wednesday. We're having staff today. And I still don't have that scripture. And it was 9 a.m. You want to talk about the peace of God and you still don't have the major part for your sermon that you're preaching later that night. You might be a little worried. And she said, Lord, I, I want to lead this prayer time with something from you. Give me something. And he gave her a scripture passage. And it was this one that I'm getting ready to read. And it was exactly what I needed for my message. You never know what the Lord's doing in you and through you. Always be obedient. So let's read here in Psalms 107, verse 23. It says, Those who go down into the sea in ships, who do business on great waters, they see the works of the Lord and His wonders in the deep. For He commands and raises the stormy wind, which lifts up the waves of the sea. They mount up to the heavens. They go down again to the depths. Their soul melts because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wit's end. Then they cry out to the Lord in their trouble, and He brings them out of their distresses. He calms the storm so that its waves are still. Then they are glad because they are quiet. So He guides them to their desired haven. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt Him also in the assembly of the people and praise Him in the company of the elders. The Lord will take care of you. Even if you find yourself in the middle of the craziest storm you've ever seen, the disciples were experienced fishermen and they were afraid for their lives. And Jesus is sleeping. But He wakes up speaks to the wind and the waves, and it's calm. I don't know what you're struggling with or where you are in your life, but I want to encourage you tonight that God is there with you. He will bring you through. As the Word says, that He will bring you out of your distress and He will guide you to your desired haven. Do not fret. Do not worry. Trust in Him. Amen? I'll be back in a second.
As I started the message earlier, I don't know how people get through life without Christ. That might be somebody in here tonight. You might say, I don't know Jesus in the way that you've been talking about. I don't know him as my peace. I don't know him as my provider. Most importantly, I don't know him as my savior. I want to give you an opportunity tonight to come to the father, to come to Jesus and say, come into my heart and be my savior. Come into my heart and make me a new creation. If that's you tonight, if you say, I want to be saved, if you would, please just raise your hand until I get a chance to see it. Just let me know that you want to be saved and I want to pray for you. Is there anybody here tonight that would say, I want Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior? Anyone? I see your hand. Was that a hand for salvation? Yes, ma'am, I see you. Okay. Thank you so much. You're, you're standing right next to that, that gentleman right there that just shook your hand. That's, that's one of our elders here at our church. His name is, is Henry Williams. Brother Henry, if I could ask you to lead her in the salvation prayer, would you be able to do that for me? Thank you very, very much. And if you're watching online or worshiping online and, and you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. We have a moderator that's online right now. And if you'll put in the chat below, just let us know that you would like to receive Jesus Christ. Our moderator will reach out to you and see if there's anything we can pray for you about. But what I would like to do at this moment is I would like to just lead anybody that's watching online in the salvation prayer. So if I can have everybody in the house, just repeat after me. Father, thank you so much for sending your son to come to the earth, to die on the cross for me. Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God and you died for me. Come into my heart and make me a new creation. I love you. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. So if you prayed that for the first time, for those of you online, you are also with us. You are a brother and sister. Please let us know in the chat below. Please let our moderator know that you have just received Christ. We want to celebrate with you. This is a huge, huge thing. This is not just some little thing that we do. This is a massive, massive thing. The Bible says that your name has just been written into the Lamb's book of life. This is a huge deal. This is a huge deal. So please let us know. Please let us know. And so I just want to say one last thing as we close. The only way to that level of intimacy, the only way to that level of peace, let me say it that way, the only way to that level of peace that Jesus showed on the boat is that the intimacy between him and the Father was so, so strong. That was the only way that he could come to that point. He spent a lot of time with the Father praying, listening, listening first, speaking second. So I just want to encourage you and ask how do how and on what do you spend your time? Do you spend it seeking him? And if not, no condemnation, just change. Just do it. Doesn't take much. Doesn't take much. I will say though it takes consistency. Consistency every single day. Amen. All right, let me bless you and then we'll do our we'll do our normal blessing. Father, I just thank you so much for all that you've done. Thank you for this wonderful time tonight. Thank you for coming here and your presence. Thank you for speaking to us. Lord, you're so good. You are a good good father. 
You are a good, good friend. You are a great healer. We thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for all that you've given us. Thank you for working in our lives, working through our lives. Father, I ask that you would work on the behalf of all of those that are here tonight physically and those online. I ask that you would give them the desires of their heart. And I ask, Lord, that you would draw them close to you, that there would be an intimacy that they've never seen, an intimacy that they've never felt, and that your voice would be so loud within them. Cause us to be obedient to your your Holy Spirit and to your word. I love you, Father. We thank you for your Son. We thank you for you, Jesus. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit, for our, our, our guide, and for our confidence that we have in you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, now let's go ahead and bless one another. If you would, please raise your hands and turn in a 360 degrees as we repeat after me. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Go with God, everybody. We love you. Have a great night.